We cannot allow a cashless society. Council culture has gone too far. I'm afraid I can't let this one go. The other day, I was disgusted to find that banking institutions of this country are able to do what would appear club together and turn someone into a non-person without so much as a buy or leave. Nigel Farage, a colleague of mine and someone I've admired for many years, has become just that, a non-person, courtesy of his bank and some seven others, so pretty much all of them in the UK, who have, it would appear, colluded together and declined his custom. Have a listen. I got a phone call a couple of months ago to say, we are closing your accounts. I asked why. No reason was given. I was told a letter would come which would explain everything. The letter came through and simply said, we are closing your accounts. We want to finish it all by a date, uh, which is around about now. I didn't quite know what to make of it. I complained. Uh, I emailed the chairman. Uh, a lackey phoned me uh, to say that it was a commercial decision, which I have to say, I don't believe for a single moment. So I thought, well, there we are. I'll have to go and find a different bank. I've been to six. Uh, no, seven banks, actually, um, asked them all, could I have a personal and a business account? And the answer has been no in every single case. So those seven must include many of the banks that we, the public, bailed out after they recklessly lent money during the subprime fiasco, which caused a crash in 2008. Austerity followed, and whilst we were paying for it in our taxes... They were rewarding themselves handsomely with bonuses, sums beyond most of our wildest dreams. Only this week, the government had to step in to ask, literally beg the banks, ask them nicely to pass on the hike in interest rates to their savings products. I mean, who the hell is running this country? Now, I get it if there is some evidence, genuine evidence of foul play, but this doesn't seem to be the case, and they have closed down Nigel's account without any explanation whatsoever and targeted members of his family as well. It's not even as though he's a bad customer. In fact, he's held these accounts in very good order for decades. He's a very, very good customer. Nigel has pinned the bank's behaviour down to three potential things. A few years ago, the European Union came up with a definition of somebody called a PEP, a politically exposed person. Now, this could range from anybody, from a prime minister down to a local councillor. I think the reason for it was... You know, were people in politics open to bribery? Could foreign governments from Ukraine or China or wherever else it may be, could they be pumping money into the, you know, the accounts of corrupt politicians? So I, I kind of understand that and get that. But then the banks, you see themselves, are part of the big corporate structures in this country. These are the organisations who did not want Brexit to happen. Uh, and I think in my case, probably the corporate world will never, ever forgive me. Because they know, if I hadn't done what I did with the help of thousands of people in, the, in, in, in our People's Army, there never would have been a referendum, let alone a victory. I'm the one that is to carry the blame. A few months ago, in the House of Commons, Sir Chris Bryant, chairman of the Privileges Committee, said, using parliamentary privilege, that I had received large sums of money directly from the Russian government, and he named the calendar year in which it had happened. Truth is, I didn't receive a penny from any source with even any link to Russia. Mm. Interestingly, nothing from Chris Bryant, who has made that comment. Why he, where he is, why is he not speaking out? I mean, where on earth has he gone? Speak up, Chris. We can't hear you. Where are, where are, where are you getting this justification for the evidence for your accusation? Even Andrew Neil, who is no big fan of GB News after his very public departure, even he was able to put that to one side to say this on Twitter. If this is anywhere near a fair account of the situation, and it looks to me that it is, then it really is quite the story and very troubling. Fair play to you, Andrew, for that. For that, you have my utmost respect, because this is something that transcends disagreements or where you or I stand on the political spectrum. This is a demonstration of the power that the banks hold. Imagine what they could do if we let them do away with cash. They all have the ultimate power of cancellation and therefore the power to destroy your life. They don't agree with you. And this, I suspect, is the reason the banks have given no explanation. It's because their behaviour is politically motivated and it's not a good look. Why else 
would they not be prepared to come clean about their reason reasoning? But punishing people for challenging a narrative is becoming commonplace. The silencing, for example, of the MPs for daring to question a truly biased privileges committee whose kangaroo court, led by head kangaroo Harriet Carman, a.k.a. Skippy, found Boris guilty of misleading the House. We knew they would because they said they would beforehand, even changing the wording to make sure that he couldn't get off the hook. Not content with finishing Boris's career, they are now targeting MPs who questioned their questionable behaviour. But it's even more sinister when financial institutions throw their hat in the ring because they can make living impossible. Take PayPal, who cancelled Toby Young's head of Free Speech Union. They disclosed his daily... They, they closed down his daily sceptic PayPal account because it seems they didn't like the fact that he was advocating for freedom of speech. They later reinstated it, but only after he kicked up a fuss. And Christina Jordan, who banked with Nationwide, met a similar fate to Nigel. She tweeted... Several months after I was elected Brexit Party MEP, my family and I had all of our accounts closed, even though I'd been a loyal customer for 30 years. And she went on to say to those cheering and celebrating the cancellation of uh, Nigel Farage's bank accounts, let's hope it never happens to you. But even after all that, Nigel still loves this country. Is this not a great country to live in? Oh, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. Now, this is after he then disclosed what had happened to him. Look, there's nothing racist or wrong with someone wanting control of their country's borders or to want to ensure a government acts with fairness and takes care of its own citizens first. Go to any country and that's what they do there. It's no accident that Nigel won the Trick Award as voted for by the people as the best news presenter. It's no accident at all. The people love him. We all love him because he's bold and brave. He's prepared to go out and say and do what many are afraid to. Because look what happens when you speak the truth. Bank hold accounts of far worse people than Nigel. The people smugglers, for one. We cannot be forced to live in a cashless society because if they choose to, the banks can destroy everything you've worked for and make life impossible if they don't like the cut of your jib. Holding a bank account in this day and age should be a human right and it must be enshrined in law. We must fight this behaviour, otherwise there's no telling who they decide will be next.